Welcome to worship at the Louisville Presbyterian Church on this All Saints Sunday. And to those online now and those who have gathered here in the sanctuary, congratulations on successfully navigating daylight savings time or attending CE class even though you hadn't meant to. So that's an extra blessing either way. During worship on All Saints Day, we remember Lewinsville members who have died in the past year along with our family and friends. We do this by the lighting of candles, as you can see here on the table, and during our communion where we are called to remember together the saving death of our Lord Jesus Christ. As we listen to the prelude today, we are invited to remember as the scripture verse tells us on the top of our worship bulletin that being part of being a saint is to be surrounded to overflowing by the love of God, a love that knows no height, nor depth, nor breadth, or length. So in our worship today, may we together be filled with fullness of God.
please rise for the call to worship. There are many who have walked the path toward God before us, showing us the way with their lives. We come to give thanks for them. As they were called by God, so are we called to live as Jesus did, answering the call of God, saying, Here I am, send me. We come to ask for guidance and courage. We are, each of us, like those who have gone before us, a complicated mixture of saint and sinner. God accepts us that way and fills us with the Spirit, empowering us to act. Let us worship the holy God. Our mothers and fathers in the faith have treasured the Word of God down through the ages, handled it with reverence and with care, and have passed on the stories and the heritage of faith to us. We believe in large part because of the memories of those who have come before us. And when we lose access to the memories of our ancestors, when we forget them, when we arrogantly think that we don't need them and can make our way all on our own, we soon find ourselves in deep, deep trouble. Our hope for the future grows out of the memories of God's help in the past. Friends, let us now confess to the Lord how slippery our memories can be and how easily we can forget the promises of God's past with us. Let us confess to the Lord first in silence and then with the unison prayer of confession in your bulletins. And let's pray together. Majestic and merciful God, we come to you as a lost and wayward people. We have forgotten your good intentions for us. We have rejected the way of Jesus. We have disregarded the power of your spirit. And we have glorified ourselves and the things we have made. Forgive us, O oh God. Restore us in the knowledge that we belong to you 
and make us alive to serve you with faith, hope, and love. For Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Do not remember the past in order to glorify the past. We remember the past in order to learn from the strengths and the failures of our ancestors. We remember the past in order to keep alive the knowledge of God's enduring reliability and commitment to God's people. We remember in order that we may hope. God's love always moves ahead of us into our future forgiving us for the sins of our past in order that we may be free to follow. Friends, hear and believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Saints Sunday, it is good for us to remember that we do not make ourselves saints. God addresses us as saints because we have been invited into God's covenant community. And within that covenant, there is a deep and abiding peace that the world can never, ever take away. Friends, let's share and bear witness to that peace right now. The peace of Jesus Christ be with you. I've shared the peace of Christ. I would like to invite any children who would like to come forward for the children's time to do so now. Good morning. Nice to see you today. Hi, guys. We're coming up the center aisle and down one side and down another. So nice to see you. So today, when Pastor Scott was talking about the prayer of confession, and at the start, we use the word saints. Today is something in the church called All Saints Day, and you might be wondering, well, what is a saint? And so I want to tell you something about that hymn we just sang. I'm going to show it to you. I put a little paper clip in it called I Sing a Song of the Saints of God. This hymn was written about 100 years ago. Because a girl, maybe your age, one of you just here, went up to her mom and said, Mama, what is a saint? And just like most moms do, she answered by writing a whole hymn, right? So you ask your mom a question, and the next day, she just sings you a big hymn about it. Maybe that doesn't happen, but that's what happened here. And there are a couple things that she says about what a saint is. They loved God somebody who loves God, and God's love made them strong. 
And then I want to hand out a piece of paper to show you. We sang something about a lot of different places you could find saints. And it wasn't all just in church or when we're doing a Bible study or when we're praying, but all kinds of places. And I need pictures so you could see what some of them are. Would you like one too? Can anybody tell me what one of these pictures is on here that you see? A school. You can meet them in school. We just sang that. That's right. A church, that our church too, right? You can meet them in church. We sang that too. And you can meet them in the sea. In the sea, that's right. That was one of them also. Yeah, which one do you see? Right, having tea, right? <laughs> yep, in the shops or train. And then this one's a little tricky. It's supposed to rhyme with train, and the word is lane. You can meet them in a lane. So you guys have figured it out. All these different places we can meet saints. And that makes me think that there are people who love God and are strong because of God's love all over, just like you all are. Now, I'm going to point out something right here. Do you see right here how there's a big blank right here? So there is a part of this hymn that says, for the saints of God are just folk like me. That's the empty word that would go there is me. Do you have one of these? So here's what I was thinking, that the next part of this children's time, I'm going to take each of your picture. And then you, you know, these take a minute to come out, right? And then you can, during sermon stories, tape your picture where it says, the saints of God are just folk like me. And your picture will go right there. And then you can remember all the places where people love God and that they um, grow strong in God's love. May I start with you? Okay, okay. take your picture, ready? There we go. And we might find you in school. And here, try not to touch that white part right there. There you go. Okay, are you ready? Here's Saint like you. Yeah, you're going to take that too. Uh, and you can now or you could wait until that. Whatever you'd like to do. I'm just try not to touch the white part. Okay, are you ready? A saint like you. And you, a saint just like you. Okay, I was afraid of this, but don't worry. I brought more film. I did. Because I wasn't sure how to tell how many pictures we had left. So we're just going to take a little minute and replace the film. It didn't come out yet, but that's okay. Okay. Open that with my teeth. There's probably a better way, but I don't know what it is. Okay. Now we're going to replace that right in here and close it. All right, and we're back on. And a saint like you. Oh, first one's a test one. Do you think third time is going to be the right time? I think it is. A saint like you times three. Guess what? That one worked. All right, and a saint just like you. And if we had enough film, guess what we would do? Take pictures of everyone here. But that would just, as you can see, take me quite some time. So here we go. So um, we're going to bless the children as they're going, all of these saints. Gracious God, we are so thankful that those of us who love the Lord and grow strong in the Lord's love can be found in so many places, right here at church, but also at school and all the places we go. May we be those saints today and the days ahead. Amen. Please pray with me. Almighty God, in you are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Open our eyes that we may see the wonders of your word and give us grace that we may clearly understand and freely choose the way of your wisdom through Jesus Christ, our Lord. This morning's scripture lesson is um, taken from Joshua. It starts in chapter 3 and goes through verses three, 7 through 17 and then continues in chapter 4, 1 through 7. Listen to the word of God. 
The Lord said to Joshua, This day I will begin to exalt you in the sight of all Israel, so that they may know that I will be with you as I was with Moses. You are the one who shall command the priests who bear the Ark of the Covenant. When you come to the edge of the waters of the Jordan, you shall stand still in the Jordan. Joshua then said to the Israelites, Draw near and hear the words of the Lord your God. Joshua said, By this you shall know that among you is the living God, who without fail will drive out from before you the Canaanites, Hittites, Hivites, Perizzites, Ergazites, Amorites, and Jebusites. The Ark of the Covenant of the Lord of all the earth is going to pass before you into the Jordan. So now select 12 men from the tribes of Israel, one from each tribe. When the soles of the feet of the priests who bear the Ark of the Lord, the Lord of all the earth, rest in the waters of the Jordan, the waters of the Jordan flowing from above shall be cut off. They shall stand in a single heap. When the people set out from their tents to cross over the Jordan, the priests bearing the Ark of the Covenant were in front of the people. Now the Jordan overflows all its banks throughout time of harvest. So when those who bore the Ark had come to the Jordan and the feet of the priests bearing the Ark were dipped in the edge of the water, the waters flowing from above stood still. Rising up in a single heap, far off Adam, the city that is beside Zerathan, while those flowing toward the Sea of Araba, the Dead Sea, were wholly cut off. Then the people crossed over opposite Jericho. While all Israel were crossing over on dry ground, the priests who bore the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord stood on dry ground in the middle of the Jordan until the entire nation finished crossing over the Jordan. When the entire nation had finished crossing over the Jordan, the Lord said to Joshua, select 12 men from the people, one from each tribe, and command them. Take 12 stones from here, out of the middle of the Jordan, from the place where the priest's feet stood. Carry them over with you and lay them down in the place where you camp tonight. Then Joshua summoned the 12 men from the Israelites whom he had appointed, one from each tribe. Joshua said to them, Pass on before the ark of the Lord God into the middle of the Jordan, and each of you take up a stone on his shoulder, one for each of the tribes of the Israelites, so that this may be a sign among you. When your children ask in time to come, what do these stones mean to you? Then you shall tell them that the waters of the Jordan were cut off in front of the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord. When it crossed over the Jordan, the waters of the Jordan were cut off. So these stones shall be to the Israelites a memorial forever. The word of the Lord. Will you join me in a moment of prayer? Gracious God, may the words of my mouth, the meditations of all of our hearts, be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So once again, standing gathered on the edge of an impossible river or sea to cross, there is no way through. Joshua and the people's vision for a future is blocked by a body of water about the same width as the Potomac River. We might not even glance down at the water when we cross over it safely over the American Legion or chain bridges. But if you have watched 1833, the Yellowstone prequel series, episode four involves a river crossing of water that is so low that stagecoaches, horses, and cattle can cross it at the exact right place and the exact right time. And when things do not go 
exactly right during the episode, it shows just how terrifying and destructive moving waters that are blocking your way can be. It gives new meaning to the comforting words of Psalm 23, describe the Lord bringing us beside still waters. The waters in front of Joshua and the people are not still. They are overflowing their banks because it is harvest time, so it is uncrossable and unpassable until, as Pam read in verse 13, the souls of the feet of the priests carrying the Ark of the Covenant, the Ark of the Lord, the Lord of all the earth, come to rest in the waters of the Jordan. The waters of the Jordan flowing from above shall be cut off, and they shall stand in a single heap. These vivid details were meant to notice, and they recall previous moments of scripture that had the same kind of phrases. It's not just any part of the foot, it is the sole of the foot, just like in Genesis. In Noah's Ark, when the dove is first sent out, and it cannot find anywhere for the sole of the foot of the dove to find rest. Same words. In Deuteronomy 28, if people are not obeying the Lord their God, it says that the people will not find rest for the soles of their feet. And rest in all these verses is the Hebrew word nuach, which Pastor Lane preached about in her Sabbath sermon on Leviticus this past summer. It's the kind of rest that means to dwell and to settle in and the kind of rest that can come no matter the context or the situation or the circumstance like standing in the middle of a river while the waters have been cut off and are in a single heap next to you. The Hebrew phrase, standing safely below a heap of water, gets used over and over. It is how Exodus and those waters are described being stopped. Any psalms that talk about Exodus use this phrase, a heap of water. And it's again here in the crossing of the Jordan River. And all the English idioms that I could think of involving the word heap, to be at the bottom of the heap, or laying in a heap, or being in a heap of trouble, a teacher that heaps on homework, or this biblical gem to heap holes on someone's head. That's in there. None of them are particularly good. A standing heap of water highlights just how precarious this moment really is. How miraculous a momentary rest in the middle of it, the sole of the foot, and how miraculous that there will be a way created through it to the other side that the Israelites will experience. The kind of moment that gets seared into your memory, that you talk about for the rest of your life. How all signs pointed to it best, a blocked route, and at worst, total devastation, but it ended up being otherwise. The kind of event would forever alter anyone who was there that day to witness it. People who were there would surely keep talking about it and tell their kids who would tell their kids who would tell their kids. But yet the Lord, through Joshua, commands a specific memory marker for one purpose. So if the story ever stops being told, if there's a time when people don't automatically know this history of this community, if the children don't learn it by heart at the soles of the feet of their elders, they will be the ones to recall the memory by doing what children do. And the first thing is that they notice. They notice a big pile of 12 stones. If you heard how Pam read it, they were supposed to stop in the middle of the river and pick up a stone and put it on their shoulder. It's a big stone, too big to hold in your hand. And then they make a pile of these 12 big stones. Would be hard to miss, but adults have been passing by it, perhaps, and not even noticing it anymore. And to a children, and to a child does the second thing a child does well, which is to ask why. Or specifically here, what do these stones mean to you? Why is this pile of 12 stones here? And that this may be a sign 
unto them, is what God says. A sign also translated a miracle of God's presence of rest and safety in the heap and telling the story when the children ask in time to come might be at a moment where they have forgotten, but they need to remember about this one time when God's being with them was so vividly clear, where it made a heap of difference this time in a good way. Our Bible is full of humans who want to mark those moments of clearly knowing that God's presence was with them, often with rocks or other physical memorials, but really our entire scripture is just that. That people want to write down that they experienced God and they didn't want to ever forget it and they wanted future generations to be able to build their faith upon these God moments. That's why we have these scriptures at all. Because the people who wrote them were so clearly convinced of real and active presence of God in their lives that they said, we need to witness this and keep this story going. We need to tell people about God's miracle, however we can keep that going. There's an urgency in making a memorial and writing down a story, an urgency to share with generations to come, but I think it is also partly the urgency of knowing that intensity gets lost over time. That a story that was so vivid and real to them, it fades, it dulls as the years go by. You can build an entire life of faith around one moment where you were so sure that God was the only reason that the soles of your feet found rest. And you ended up on the other side of something that you thought would destroy you. And the candles on the reed table remind us that some of those resting places, the ways that God has been with us is God lighting the way through the dark valley of grief. That's why the writer and theologian Kate Bowler says that God sometimes gives us these moments that she calls supernatural closeness, directly correlated with our greatest times of suffering. That is the ever-present help of God in our times of trouble. God's real miraculous presence, a supernatural closeness that overwhelms any intellectual doubts, any hard questions that somebody, a friend or family member might skeptically ask us about, why do you go to church? Why do you believe what you believe? And we can just say, I can't explain it. Some of you have shared that kind of story with me. I can't explain it, but when I needed it most, when I was the most empty or broken, or brokenhearted, or devastated, there was all of a sudden enough, or there was more than I knew that I had a sense that I wasn't alone. The pain started to lessen. There was a pilot light that would not go out in my darkness. A steadier step, the sole of my foot, and I found rest. When the realm of this world and our limited reality of it and the realm of the kingdom of mercy and love intersected. No wonder people want to set that kind of moment in stone. Even if these life-altering clear moments of God's presence are ultimately unforgettable, our desire to orient our lives around the clarity of the priorities those moments bring We can lose that. We lose that over time. And the Israelites in future generations will start living their communal life in a way that doesn't reflect they had this intense experience with God, many of them recorded in our scripture. It reminds me of a character in a Jane Smiley novel, Horse Heaven, named Buddy, who has become, after an experience with the Lord, somewhat of a ruthless horse trainer. His wife finds him in tears one day and asks him why he's crying, and this is what he says. When the Lord came into me, it was such a good feeling. I thought, well, I can do anything because of this feeling. But then there was all this stuff to do. 
and to think about, and I don't remember the feeling all that well anymore. Buddy would resonate with St. Augustine's prayer that, Lord, all I have discovered about you, I have done so by remembering. Which is why we follow a Lord who commands us regularly to remember, whose last command before he was betrayed, arrested, and killed was that we would remember. We would remember with ritual doing these things, all the things that was done for us in Jesus' death and saving resurrection that we remember at this table, that the death and the cross is not the end of the story. A death that shattered our known reality, our understanding of cause and outcome, effect. When the realm of this world and our limited understanding of its reality and the realm of the kingdom of mercy and love intersected in a way that would never be fully divided again. It was the forever defeat of the forces of death and the things that drain life out of the living so that we can remember or experience a new miraculous saving and supernatural closeness and pilot lights and steady steps rest for the soles of our feet no matter what the heap of grief or loss or challenge or disappointment or blocked path that we thought we'd be walking on right now threaten our faith You can build an entire life around one moment when you were so sure that God was the only reason that the waters parted into a heap, but only really if you remember it, if you make it present. What does that moment mean to you still? Even though there is so much stuff to do, so much to think about. Which is why, like the Israelites, we as this church do this together. This is our together work. The stones of the Israelites were for the community's memory, especially the children and the future generations, to remember our saints who have gone before, to share our history of congregation, to tell each other stories of when God was with me in a heap, perhaps sparked by a question of a child. What signs of God's miraculous presence have you seen? What signs have we seen together in our 175 plus years as a church? And do we remember? Can we tell our miraculous crossings and saving moments that we have marked together as a congregation in our history books and our pamphlets, the wooden cross that stands outside our church, the tapestry, the quilt, these banners, the things we see around us? Do we know our stories? Do we share them with each other? What did they first mean to us? And what do they mean to us still? And remember that God's real presence in your life and our lives together is what we do every time we come to the memory marker that is this table and we join the communion saints in communion with all the saints, then, now, and forevermore. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Gracious God, we are so grateful that you are with us for those moments, for our memory together, for your guiding love of this church and how each of us is here today because we know something about you and we want to know more. Come to us, Spirit. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.
friends, as part of the communion of saints, let us affirm together what we believe as we say together the words of the Apostles' Creed, which can be found in your bulletins. What do you believe? I believe God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. Friends, the flowers in our sanctuary on this All Saints Sunday are given to the glory of God by Diane Wachtel in loving memory of her parents, Louise and Edison Nunez. And so we join this day with Diane in giving thanks for Louise and Edison for their impact on Diane and her family and the impact that they had on the world. At this time, we'd like to invite everyone to sign and fill out the red hand of greeting pad that should be towards the inside edge of your pews. Fill that information out, send it down the pew and back. If you are new to the life of Lewinsville Presbyterian, we'd love to be in touch with you. So if you could leave some contact information for yourself, either an email address or a phone number, that would be terrific. Uh, we are wanting to encourage people to make name tags for themselves so that we can greet each other by name following worship. There should be name tags in the pews just as there are out in the narthex um, for you to do on your way in. And if you didn't do it today, there's always next Sunday and you can, uh, you can do it then. As we are receiving this morning's offering, we want to say a word of thanks to all of you who have already made your financial pledge for next year towards the mission and ministry of Louisville Presbyterian. There is an update in your bulletin from the Stewardship Committee with the current status of this year's stewardship campaign. We have made a lot of really great progress in the campaign, but still have a ways to go. So if you have not yet made your pledge, you can scan QR code that is right there beside that stewardship update in the announcement section, and it'll take you directly to the giving page of our website. Since the prayers of the people today are going to be folded into our communion liturgy, I wanted to raise some prayer concerns that belong to our congregation today. We continue to hold Ray Martin in our prayers um, in the tragic death of his daughter Annette a couple of weeks ago. A Legacy of Love memorial service for Annette is being organized by some of her closest friends and will be held this coming Saturday, November the 11th, at Union Station in the East Hall of Union Station. Um, that service will be from 10.30 until 12.30 um, in the morning. Folks are invited to arrive as early as 9.30 for refreshments and fellowship. Um, people who are coming to that are being invited to wear brightly colored clothing. And so we'd encourage you to do that. You can be in touch with Ray Martin um, if you have any questions. And that service is going to be live streamed and Ray can um, get you information about that. Rachel Russell's nephew, Sebastian, continues his ongoing and challenging recovery, but is making good progress um, at the Shepherd Center in Atlanta. And so we want to continue to hold Rachel and her family, and especially Sebastian. We want to be very much in prayer um, around the ongoing war in the Middle East and the conflict between Israel and Hamas. Many of you have reached out about your anguish over this war and the enormous suffering that has taken place, as well as the anti-Jewish hostility and anti-Muslim hostility that is occurring in our own country. So I would invite you to join me in prayers that our grief and the grief of so many around the world will play a role in turning the hearts of people towards each other um, in that difficult situation. This coming Tuesday, uh, November 7th, is Election Day, and so we would invite people to be in prayer for the candidates, as well as for um, voters, encouraging everyone who is eligible to vote um, this coming Tuesday, if you have not already voted early. 
And on this All Saints Sunday, we do give thanks for all of those who have died and gone before us, and in particular those represented by the candles on the retable today who will be named during the communion prayers. In your pews um, each week, you will see a blue concern card. Anytime, friends, that you want to write out a prayer of concern um, that you have or a prayer of thanksgiving and drop this in the offering plate or hand it to one of the pastors on your way out of church, um, you would be most welcome to do so. Friends, let us now worship the Lord with our morning offering.
seated. Communion today will be served at the front of the sanctuary. The ushers will indicate when each pew is to come forward to receive the bread and the cup, which after receiving, you can return to your seat by using the side aisle. For those who are unable to come forward, please indicate to the usher and the elements will be brought to you. And there are gluten-free crackers available on your way up. Just indicate that you need that. On the juice tray, the liquid on the outside rim with a lighter color is our wine, and the liquid on the inside of the darker color is the grape juice. Thank you. Friends, we are told in Scripture that people come from east and west, north and south, to sit at the table in the presence of the Lord, and that is certainly true of us this day. And the remarkable thing about this table is that there is always enough room. There is always an extra seat, and at this table, no one sits alone. At this table, no one goes hungry. And those empty places at our own tables, the seats no longer filled by those whom we have lost, are remembered and held here. They are filled by the love of Christ who never leaves us alone in grief. So friends, you are most welcome at this table, for there is always room and always more than enough. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. Let us pray. God of the ages, we praise you for all your servants who have done justice loved mercy, and walked humbly with their God. For apostles and martyrs and saints of every time and place, who in life and death have witnessed to your truth, we praise you, O God, for all those who have faithfully served you, witnessed bravely, and died in faith, and who are still shining lights in the world. We praise you, O God, From every race and tongue, from every people and nation, you have gathered saints into your kingdom. You have shown them the path of life and filled them with the joy of your presence. How glorious is your heavenly realm, where the multitude of your saints rejoice with Christ. Renew our communion with all your saints, especially those whom we name before you who have died this year. For K. Ansel. For D. Custer. For Francis Grimes. For Steve Heemstra. For Nance Kidwell. For Dong Lee. For Earl Merritt. For Connie Schaefer. For Margot Sheffy. Ruth Thomas, for friends and family known to each of us here today. Holy God, you have surrounded us with a great cloud of witnesses, saints and faithful people in every age that strengthened by their witness and supported by their fellowship, we may run with perseverance the race that is set before us, and with them receive the unfading crown of glory. Therefore, we join the saints and with the faithful of every time and place who forever sing the glory of your name.
praise you, most holy God, for sending your only Son to live among us, sharing our joy and sorrow. He was found among the poor and poor in spirit, that all who seek God's presence might find it there. He told your story, healed the sick, and was a friend of sinners. Obeying you, he took up his cross and died that we might live. We praise you that he overcame death and has risen to rule the world. He is still the friend of sinners. We trust him to overcome every power that can hurt or divide us. And we believe that when he comes in glory, we will celebrate victory with him. Remembering all your mighty and merciful acts, your saving love through Jesus Christ, we break bread and share one cup. Gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these, your gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the whole world the body of Christ. Send us out in the power of the Spirit to live for others as Christ lived for us. Through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, and the glory and honor of Almighty God. We pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us to say, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, as earth as it is in heaven. This day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, on the night when Jesus was betrayed, he was leaving instructions for his disciples, and part of that instruction was taking bread and breaking it. And he said, this is my body broken for you. Whenever you eat of it, do so in remembrance of me. And after they eaten the bread, he took the wine and poured it and said, This is my blood shed for you in the forgiveness of your sins. Whenever you drink of it, do so in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat of this bread or drink of this cup, you proclaim God's saving grace until he comes again. Friends, these are the gifts of God for the people of God. Hallelujah. Amen.
Friends, please join me in our prayer after the supper. The words can be found in your bulletin. Let us pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks for this feast and your goodness and love. As you have nourished us in Jesus Christ, send us forth to feed and serve others, sharing your peace with the whole community and showing your faithful love in the world. Through Jesus Christ, the bread of life for all. Amen. As we come now in following Christ into the world, I first would like to thank our guest musicians, Atticus Mellor Goldman on cello and Sarah Berger on the violin for their beautiful music this morning. We are grateful. And if you enjoy strings and also as part of continuation of the All Saints Remembrance um, time here today, come back at four o'clock. There will be a harpist playing in the sanctuary. The music will also be out in the cemetery through a speaker. There will be a prayer walk, an opportunity to light candles in remembrance and all are welcome. The annual meeting for the Lewinsville Retirement Residences will be next Sunday, November 12th, after the worship service, and all members here are part of that corporation and are invited to attend. The new adult education modules have started. There is a reading the book Integrity that Rob Hunter is leading, and Pastor Scott is doing an Old Testament 101 course. Next Friday will be the Rocks of Ages uh, Senior Luncheon. There's information in the bulletin about signing up for that time of fellowship and um, meal together, and Pastor Scott will be talking about his sabbatical. On November 19th, Alan Stevens and Madison Closter will talk about their trip to Kenya with a light lunch following the ship, so please mark your calendars for that. And now will you please rise for our closing hymn.
one in thee, for all are thine. All are one in God, for all are God's. And as we remember today, saints represented by these candles, the one we hold in our hearts, we know those are connected to saints who are all here today. All of us who are saints because of that overwhelming, overflowing love of God, the one that gives us a resting place for the soles of our feet, no matter the heap of water that is near us, just because we are God's beloved. So now may the Lord bless and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and grant you peace both this day and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.